Hello, Internet. Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. It's Friday, and that means it's time to fire up another free-to-play game here on Big Dave is Cheap. This week, we're playing Gotham City Imposters Free-to-Play from Monolith. Gotham City Imposters started its life as a direct download game in the $15 price range on PS3, Xbox 360, and on PC under the Games for Windows Live platform. On August 30th, Gotham City Imposters came to Steam on the Steamworks platform, in a free-to-play model. Now this raised the hackles of some players and brought up a lot of questions and even though it's been a couple of weeks since the transition occurred I thought I should make a video kind of giving an overview of exactly what's new, what's different, and what the experience is like for new players joining the game and old players who've been playing for a while. This isn't going to focus on gameplay because I've done that video before. You might be seeing an annotation to that on your screen right now. And really, I just want to focus on the technical stuff here. What do you get for having been a previous player? Does your DLC transfer? What's it like for new players? Etc. Etc. So we're going to get into this here in a brand new account. This is an alternate Steam account that I have, and this is not linked in any way to a purchased version of Gotham City Imposters. So this is the experience that you, as a new player who does not own Gotham City Imposters, will have if you choose to play the game. So here it is. Gotham City Imposters free to play. Players of the retail version should be very familiar with this menu, and players who haven't ever played Gotham City Imposters at all should be very familiar with this menu. I mean, it's simple as hell, right? Play now. Guess what that does? Yeah, you're right. Secret identity, tweak your guns, tweak your costumes, track record is your stats, black markets where you blow your real money, help and options, well you guessed it, and exit game, yeah, it does that. So the one thing I want to point out here that they have changed is this little dually... Dually? I don't know. Yeah, this little doohickey right here. This will show you your active Steam friends, of course, on this super secret second account. I don't have any Steam friends. Uh, but once you do, you'll see the online friends displayed right there, and you can click it and invite those guys to a party. Very nice, very cool. Works really well, a lot more streamlined, and a lot easier than the old Games for Windows Live system. So... Yeah, thank you for bringing this game to Steamworks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So again, you are a new player. You're coming to this game for the first time, and what you know about it is, is that it's a zany, crazy, Batman-based, COD-style multiplayer FPS, right? That's maybe what you've heard, read some reviews, whatever. So what do you think is going to be available for customization based on that? Was your answer nothing? You're right. You're a level one. You've never touched the game. You've never played the game. Guess what weapons you have available to you? Guess what backup weapons, support items, gadgets? Yeah, this here. This is what you got. You got the Dawn Patrol. You got the Kingmaker, the Pipe Bomb, the Grapple Gun. You have these fun facts. Some people might call them perks. And this Rampage. You might call it a kill streak. And that's it. Everything else needs to be earned weapon mods weapon types you gotta unlock it all and you'll do that through progressing through the levels of the game just play every level will bring you something whether it's the ability to unlock a mod or a weapon a costume a head whatever a body type you're gonna get that nice trickle they'll put the iv right into your arm and they're gonna drip upgrades in at the perfect intervals really nice works out well I love games that do that, even though I know I'm being manipulated by them. But every time I grab an upgrade, it's so cool, man. I just got more powerful. I just gotta, I gotta get that weapon that everybody's killing me with. I want that damn gun that shoots electricity or whatever. You know, it's, it's fun. I mean, it is one of those game systems that taps right into a part of our brain that really just wants reward. You know, it works out well. Why change it? Why do anything different? So again, we're a new player, so what do you think we're going to have in terms of bats and jokers costumes? Did you guess nothing? Well, you're right again. And here we go. Yeah, nothing. We got the basic thing that you're wearing right now, and that's it. What you'll generally see with the split between what you have to pay real money for and what you can use in-game currency for is maybe a 60-40 split. Some places, like here, it's a little bit different. This is more of like a 50-50, a you know, but normally it's about 60% in-game currency and about 40% out of game. And most of the out of game stuff 
is bought in a whole total costume pack. So for instance, you know, the 10 gallon is gonna come as a cowboy. You know, it's gonna have all the basic awesome stuff, right? Cool, wonderful. Pretty simple, pretty, uh, well, pretty expected, honestly. So you'll go through and you'll unlock costume coins as you play. You'll use those to unlock the items or you'll spend your real money. Again, I don't think I have to continue to show you this. Greeting cards, guess how many there are? Yeah, you're right. So forth and so on. So that pretty much does it for a new player, right? That's how it's gonna be. You're gonna have nothing. If you want something, you're gonna have to come here, right? You're gonna have to buy it, spend that real money. You want an XP boost? You're gonna have to spend that money. You want a mascot? You're gonna have to spend that money. You want an imposter bundle? You're gonna have to spend that money. Where, what did that, wow. The accent just, it just came on. And I just didn't stop it. <laughs> so here we go, guys. That's pretty much it. That's a new player's experience. Now, here's the thing that I think will be interesting for some. Now let's go over to my actual real account that is linked to a retail version of the game and all the DLC. And let's see what it looks like in the free-to-play version. And now may I present to you Gotham City Imposters free-to-play linked to a retail copy of the game with all DLC purchased prior to the free-to-play launch. So what are the differences? Well, we're going to get into that for sure, but first... Here's a little dongly dealy widgety thingy. How does it work? Well, much as you'd expect. Here's the people. And yeah, you group with them. Nice, easy, simple. Games for Windows Live. Not needed, not included, not wanted, and gone forever. Oh, praise be to Allah. All right, so what are we looking at here in terms of the differences? Now, of course, a, a new player, right? Nothing, you're, you're not gonna have anything, that's expected. We want to see what I get for being a veteran owner of the retail copy of Gotham City Imposters. So let's head into Secret Identity and try to discern what I was gifted for free. Loadouts, good place to start. I've got them all. You're given all five loadouts at level one automatically. That is something I want to reiterate. You start at level one, regardless of whether you own the game before or not. You start at level one. So if you were level 874, you're level one. But the blow is softened a bit because you are given several weapons and whatnot right out the gate. So let's try to look and see exactly what we're being gifted for being veterans of the game. We will start with rifles. The Dawn Patrol, of course, the default weapon. But if we take a look at it, we will notice that we've been gifted all of the mods. Very nice. And that's true across the board. If you received a weapon as a veteran reward, you get all the mods. So the Partisan, do we got the mods? Yes, we do. And so forth and so on. I'm not gonna show you we got the mods on every single, every single gun, but suffice it to say, we got the mods. So uh, here we go, Desperado, Gifted, Gatekeeper, I've unlocked. How do I know that? The mods, right? I got none. So that tells me that that's something that I've unlocked. I think that's the only weapon I know for sure that I've unlocked. So continuing through, looking at heavy weapons, the Shredder, the Deep Freeze. Snipers, we got the Marshall. Shotguns, the Chaperone. Launchers, we have the Thunder Dragon. And Miscellaneous, you got the Motivator. And that is it for guns. That is a nice swath of guns. It covers pretty much every class you could think of and every sort of configuration. So really, really nice. Backup weapons. They're all the same. So we'll take a look at support items. Support items, I know for sure you got the pipe bomb, impact grenade, and boomerang. I think I unlocked the hatchet, but I'm not sure. The rest of these, I'm not sure. Gadgets, you got the glider rig, the grapple gun, and the roller skates for sure. The inflatable shoes, I think? Target goggles, I don't know. But glider, grapple, roller skates, for certain, unlocked as a veteran reward. Characters, well, you got them all. Face types, you got them all. Voices, you've got all the default voices that aren't included as part of a DLC. Fun facts, some people might call those perks. Fun fact one, yep. Fun fact two, got them. Rampages, yeah, yeah, we got them. And psych profile, I haven't hit the level to actually unlock that yet, but as you might imagine, you got them all. There you go. Maybe I have hit the level to unlock Psych Profile. I can't remember. Anyway, I'm in denial. 
Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's pretty nice. That's a very generous amount of stuff. Uh, now, in terms of costumes and, uh, and calling cards and all that stuff, that's where it gets a little more complicated. I owned all the DLC. If you owned all the DLC, they honor that. Now, there has been additional DLC that's been created for the free-to-play. None of it's really cosmetic. Most of it is like, unlock all the guns and stuff like that. So, uh, when it comes to costumes, yeah, I've got all five loadouts available to me for costumes, and I've got all of the costumes save one? Let's see, where's it at? Yes, I do not have the uh, ninja costume. So I have everything because I unlocked it all with DLC. I didn't have the ninja costume before. It was the only DLC that didn't come with the Arkham City Imposters. The Arkham City Imposters. <laughs> the Arkham City bundle that included Gotham City Imposters. So there you go. I mean, if you own the DLC, if you picked it up as part of that Arkham bundle, this is what you've got, which is pretty much everything. Calling cards, it's all included. All of the custom calling cards, they're all there. Uh, the symbols, uh, those unlock through gameplay. Catchphrases unlock through gameplay. Uh, you've also got all of your mascots. Those all come. Beaky and uh, Office Bat unlock through progression. So those would not be unlocked yet for me. But everything else, Gary, Crocky, everybody, all there, all ready to go. So all in all, it's a pretty generous reward to those of us who are veterans of the game. Also, if you had that uh, Arkham City pack, you've got your boosts, your team costume coin boost, your team XP boost, your solo boosts. They're all there. They're all available. So pretty much, I have to say, they did right. They did right by the veteran players of the game. Now, some people out there make the very strange argument of... Well, I paid for the game, and now they're giving the game to all these people for free? That's bullcrap. I should get my money back. Well, that's bullcrap. That argument. Uh, you paid for the game months ago, or weeks ago, or whatever, and you've had the opportunity to enjoy the game and play it. And now the game has changed its model. You're not owed anything, frankly. I mean, that might sound a little harsh, but it is what it is. I mean, I understand the idea of feeling a little bit betrayed or hurt or whatever, especially if you bought the game on like August 29th. But yeah, I mean, if you've owned the game for a month or two, I just don't see how you feel that you really have any firm ground to stand on. If you bought the game at, you know, 11.59 on the 29th of August, yeah, you probably got kind of screwed. But apart from that, if you bought it during the summer sale like most people did, I think you had your opportunity to get your enjoyment out of it. And if you've ever played this game and you like it, then you should be rejoicing at the fact that it's gone free to play. It's here, and it is available to actually play. You can get games again. Now, I know they were having some matchmaking problems, and that was contributing to it, but the population of the game had declined since the Steam sale. You know, there for a month or so after the Steam sale, it was great. You were popping games constantly. Everything was wonderful for most of the month of, uh, of July and uh, the first part of August. Then it, there was a sharp decline, and, and games really became a lot harder to find. And I was never able to get a game of Bounty Hunter in the PC version of the game. And now I can pop a game of Bounty Hunter at 4 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time anytime I try. I'm really, really happy that the game has gone free to play. I don't feel slighted as a person who did pay real money for this game. I feel happy that I can now actually play a game that I enjoy. If you have thoughts on the Gotham City Imposters transition to free to play, I'd love to hear them. Leave them in the comments below. Tell me what you think of the video. Tell me what you think of Free to Play Friday as it continues to move forward strongly. I hope everybody has had a great time watching the last couple of videos that I've done. The free indie games telepaint video. Really proud of that. Uh, Mark did uh, send me a little feedback on Twitter, you know, just said that he really enjoyed the video. And that's the kind of stuff that really means so much to me. When developers who are out there maybe struggling, kind of not sure what direction they're headed in, and, and they just kind of see something that's praising their work and they know, hey, you know, this is it. I'm, I'm hitting people, I'm touching people. Uh, my work is getting out there and it, and it means something to somebody. And that's really what I enjoy about the videos, about these small, tiny games, these free games. And, and I'm, I'm really happy to do it. And free indie games is going to be a, a big part of the channel going forward. So I don't really have anything to uh, harass you with this week. No thoughts on anything. I keep thinking I'll make a video about the whole green light controversy. Uh, but it's really kind of passed. So uh, I was happy to see the 10 games that were actually added through green light. All of them, them deserving. I would say five or six of them were pretty predictable. McPixel, Project Zomboid. 
Uh, a couple of them I had never heard of. Uh, so it's really, really cool. Uh, I'll pro probably try to have a link in the description below to the Giant Bomb article on the 10 games that were added, uh, because, you know, if I've got to get uh, information on video games, I tend to like to get it from Giant Bomb. So uh, I'll link you guys over there, take a look at it. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Download Gotham City Imposters free to play and play it. Play it with me, play it with anybody, just play it. It's a damn fun game, quality first person shooter. It's free. It was transitioned to free to play in what I believe is a pretty fair manner. If you have a difference of opinion, let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.